And now a little about our presenters. Danielle Cook is a professional nutritionist and cooking instructor, and her sister, Adrian Cook, is a gardening and cooking writer. We are so excited to have them here for today's Pumpkin Perfection Live Online Cooking Demonstration. Welcome, Danielle and Adrian. Hi, thank you so much, Grace. And hello to Adrian. Hi, Danielle. And hello to all of you out there. We're very, very excited to be here in the fall in a beautiful time of year and bringing you some great yummy ideas for one heck of a stuffed pumpkin. We're gonna say goodbye to turkey today and hello pumpkin as the main course for Thanksgiving. Yep, so our recipe today is actually comprised of several kind of sub recipes. So while the recipe says it's a stuffed pumpkin, it's actually got several steps and each of those steps could be extracted as pretty much its own recipe, right? That's right. We can use, and we'll talk about uh, ways of using some of the steps, some of the other uh, ingredients in here uh, in different, completely different ways than what we're gonna be doing today. But what we're doing today is gonna take a, a certain amount of uh, prepping. So I think we should get started, right? We should get started. So let me turn this over to Adrian to attack the first part of the, of the recipe which is going to be the pumpkin itself. Okay, here we go. We're gonna be using two pound pumpkins, about a little less than two pounds, maybe a one and three quarter pound pumpkin today to prep. Uh, you can use smaller pumpkins in this and use them as single servings. This one obviously would serve maybe two to three people, especially once it's stuffed. But you're going to need more than just the one pumpkin for the, for the whole for recipe. For the whole recipe, yes. It, 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 it basically fills about four to five pounds worth of pumpkins. So you could do one five pound pumpkin and fill the whole thing and serve that as one beautiful big meal or big main course, or you can do the smaller ones and serve them individually. Anyway, let's get this one. We're gonna start by opening it up. And this is basically the same way you would if you're doing a jack-o'-lantern. So you plunge the knife down as far as it'll go at a slight angle, and that'll get the top off. And the last one, here we go. Get it all the way down so that all the connections are freed up. I think we've got a little bit of a, there we go. Now we just pop this off, she says. Ah, this one's a little bit stuck down in there. There we go coming off of the inside. Here. So this is a pie pumpkin, or otherwise known as a sugar pumpkin. So here we are, we're, we're pulling the whole thing out and some of the innards are coming with it, which is actually a big help. Sometimes that you manage to do that, and other times it just pops right off and then you've got to get in and scrape a little bit more. We're gonna use the top as well, continuously throughout the whole, the whole preparation and, and, the, ser and the, uh, the serving of the pumpkin. So we're gonna take this part off so that we have a nice cleaned up top, which will be part of the final serving of the pumpkin. Now, in here, we have to dig down into here to get the insides out. You've probably done this when you make your jack-o'-lanterns or anytime you use a fresh pumpkin, you generally speaking, will have to do it this way. Sometimes you could just cook the whole pumpkin in the thing. Here we go, let's put this right here. You could, you could one way to, um, get the pumpkin flesh out if you're only using the flesh is to cook it cook it whole in the microwave or in the oven and take the seeds out afterwards but obviously in this particular case since we're stuffing the pumpkin we can't do that so i'm reaching here and just get as many of the seeds out as i can and this just takes a little time and a little effort to do all that So one of the nice things about this is that we're working with not only uh, the pumpkins, but we're also using other kinds of squash. And as you can see in on the camera, we've got a yellow pumpkin and we've got a different kind of uh, a sugar pumpkin, a pie pumpkin as well, slightly different variety than what Adrian's working with. And we've got kaboka squash. Um, so this is a great way to use different kinds of the big white one too. Yeah, that's what oh, I said, the big white, the white pumpkin. Yeah, um, which has white flesh. So it's a little different. We'll see one in a minute because we actually made that one, one just like it yesterday. 
yeah so so you know you can kind of have fun with the colors of this um and uh for the filling part which we'll get to in, in, in shortly um one of the one of the layers of the filling is to put additional mashed squash in there and you could use for that, you could use red curry, or you could use Hubbard, or you could use red vodka. curry has very red flesh. Yes, red and curry. That's, one, that's the reason why it's called that. It's a dark flesh. It's lovely, and that certainly would be a highly desirable pumpkin to use for this. Um, in a, either in addition to the kabocha or instead of the kabocha. All right, here we go. Danielle and Adrian, could I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any pumpkin varieties that you don't recommend using? Well, I mean, the I'm, I'm maybe jumping on that, but in terms of for the presentation of this dish, um, you know, the, if you go to one of the larger sort of jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, the flesh inside, which you want to be able to eat, is going to be a little fibrous. Um, but in terms of um, another another pre another what do i want to say like the the pumpkin you're going to present this in um you could actually you could do this even with um an acorn a series of acorn squashes you could you could you know yeah, right. um butternut would not work to present the to, to stuff a butternut but you could use butternut squash as one of the layers right like instead of kabocha yeah which and you'll you're going to see all of this as we go through it the so most know. edible pumpkins are going to be the pie pumpkins and the sugar pumpkins so keep that in mind but but no you can really you can go farther afield than that if you if you decide to, I've done, I've done it with, I've stuffed the Kaboka pumpkin, use that as the base, um, the acorn as the base. So yeah, you can do, do different ones, different stuffings. And the stuffing itself, we're going to talk about that later. We can talk about what, what other vegetables we can use it in. So the uh, farmer's markets right now, of course, have some really fabulous varieties. And, um, you know, you can take advantage of what's there. Um, one of the things that, uh, that you will see on some of these pumpkins is the um, this kind of brown. Uh, what would you call that? The warts. The warts. The warts. Yeah. Um, which is an indication of the sugars that are coming out from the inside of the of the flesh. So there there are there is a pumpkin out there called that is often referred to as the peanut pumpkin, and it looks like it is covered. Mm -hmm in peanuts in their like peanuts that are in their shell not shelled peanut and those are all sugar deposits i have worked with these pumpkins in the past and they are the sweetest sweetest pumpkin i've ever worked with having said that i don't think i'd use a peanut pumpkin as a stuffing pumpkin because one of the things for this is we're going to be glazing the skin of this and this making the skin edible with a peanut cup pumpkins you really don't want to do that yeah that's, that's true that's the true. effect of the peanuts on the skin is not particularly interesting to okay so this is done and we're just going to move all of this out of the way here whoops this one had an awful lot of seeds in it danielle My goodness. yeah this was a this was a hefty yeah guy. okay it was well, i'm going to rinse this off while you do the your thing here okay and you might get rid of some of these little bits okay so you're gonna rinse that yep and then i'm gonna do similarly with the um with my kabocha which is this is gonna be a whole lot easier because this is just gonna get roasted and we're gonna once it's all roasted we're gonna scoop the flesh out so um this is an easier process i'm cutting as you can see, in half. I'm not going to worry about that. It's not an even half. That's okay. Um, it's just it's just going to be put in the oven and roasted. So it doesn't need to look as pretty as Adrian's and as clean as Adrian's. So this is uh, takes two seconds to just get all that out and do the other half too. You made this. Boom, so slippery, I can hardly even oh, handle it. it. That's okay. That's all right. There's a larger one back here. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. 
So, you know, I know people are sometimes reluctant to take on winter squash because they're hard to, to they can be tough to, to clean and to, to manage. But um, you, if you get one that's like this size, this was a perfect, you know, squat size. It was like a pound, pound and a half. Okay, so similarly, that's all cleaned up, similar to Adrian's. Now we're gonna do some drizzle the interior with some oil and just rub that in there. And then I'm gonna sprinkle with some salt, a little bit of kosher salt and lots of fresh ground pepper. And now Adrian's got yours oiled I'm up. I'm gonna do, not quite, I'm gonna do my little drizzle of oil right in here. And in these deep ones, you may have to just use your hands to, to move the oil around and just get it oiled like this. This is just water that's on the outside, and this is going to have a little oil on it. So these are going to basically be prepped the same way. Would you mind putting a little salt and pepper in that? Yes, and then the, if you get them onto a sheet pan, I'm going to put them skin side down. That's going to go skin side That's down. That's going to go skin side down. Mine is going to go skin side up. Yep. This will get, in the oven, this will get cooked, so this will get nice and caramelized on this outside. But all we want to do is cook this a little bit, just enough to have it not quite as firm as it is now. Okay. And so this will take a little long, a little sh less time to cook. This one will take a little less time to cook than these will. But we're going to talk about probably about a total of 45 minutes by the time we do both. And there. so when your when your kaboka comes out of the oven, look at this beautiful, beautiful brown, golden, golden brown, and very very soft. And at this point, it's super easy to um, scoop it out, and you're gonna scoop it out and you're gonna mash it. So just bringing it out, getting it out of the shell. And some people actually don't mind eating the the skin of the kaboka but for our purposes for this stuffing we're not going to do it that way right we are going to just get all that flesh out and you could sp spend some time really really scooping it to, down to the down to the bottom um this this kaboka is wonderful and soup makes a great squash soup as well so both sides and you want to yield about a pound. It's about, what is it? About a pound mm -hmm. of flesh, mm -hmm. a little over a pound of flesh. That's right. For this. Probably about uh, two cups. I'm, oh, more than that. Maybe That's two, much. maybe maybe three, but not too much more. Okay. I, don't, I don't dig down into the green part too much. I just take the colored part out. And so Matt, let's talk about mashing. So mashing, mm -hmm. it's really just a matter of we're just going to do a spoon. It's already pretty thoroughly mashed. That's pretty much all you need. Yeah, and we've got some so already. It's nice already and... mashed that we've just. You could obviously you can use a, a masher if you want, but you don't have to, and you're not. You 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 no point in, in messing another dish, right? Okay, so we have plenty of mashed kaboka. We have our pumpkins in the oven. And we are now ready. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take. We gotta show. I gotta show. You wanna show them what it looks show like when, you it's... when the when what the pumpkin looks like when it comes out of the oven. So it's partially cooked, like this, and you can see it just it's still firm. It's not like falling apart or anything like that. And this is what the interior looks like. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen the interior of pumpkin, but just. Just to show you that it's, it's still it's still firm, but it's not it's not really it's not you know it, it's gonna once it gets goes back into the oven with the stuffing in it, it'll get properly cooked and a little bit of caramelization on our uh, top here already happening. So this is going to be the one that we're going to fill. And now we're going to shift over. We're going to take you got everything you got there for for the stuffing. So getting the stuff. The next the next. Point, the next um, the next part of this, the second recipe within the recipe is going to be our stuffing, one of the, the, the main stuffing. And that is going to be comprised of 
these ingredients, mushrooms. So we've got some baby Bellas sliced up um, and you could use shiitakes. You could do a wild mushroom mix. You could do white mushrooms. You could do like the Bellas, um, whatever, whatever floats your boat, as they say. Um, so we, we've got a pound here, um, a little bit less than a pound. Um, and that's going to be sauteed with some kale that Adrian's going to prep for you in just a moment. We've got some chopped shallots that's going to go into it. We've got some garlic minced garlic. We've got some fresh thyme, which is uh, all minced up as well. As you can see, we've, we've had to do a lot of pre-prep just to keep things rolling here. Um, we're going to also use some butter, nice chunk of butter. Um, and then we'll do, do some deglazing with sherry, so a dry sherry, and a sherry vinegar. So all that's going to get set over on the cooktop and Adrian is going to give you a quick lesson in how to prep kale and this kale is going to go into our stuffing as well so over to you we've got beautiful kale if you're not a fan of kale you could use spinach uh, or any other green really uh, there's lots of different choices on the green so what for the kale we just do this we take the rib out uh, you, you you can use the ribs, but you have to really cook them in advance. I never do. I just do it this way. So we're going to just pull the, the the green off the ribs, and then chop up the kale. And Danielle is uh, getting the mushrooms started. But before we go over there, uh, if you don't want to use a green, like if you have somebody who has an issue with greens, uh, it's a you know it can be an issue if you're if you've got a if you're on certain kind of medications, like for heart medications. You can use, alternatively, you could use, uh, I, in my opinion, the best things would be like a fennel, which you could chop up and and put right into the mushrooms in, in the same way you would with the, with the kale, which is going to go in with the mushrooms in just a moment. And you can also use, you could use celery, chopped celery. Those would be two good flavors that would um, be similar in, in, in flavorings and in type to the, the, uh, the kale without it being um the having the issue of having too many greens in here and if you do like the latinato kale because it's tender it's more tender than the than the um than the uh uh the curly kale but if you have some in your garden that you really want to use by all means you know something fresh out of the garden like that we're just going to chop this up in, into sort of bite-sized pieces so um, one bunch of kale is going to weigh about a half a pound which is what you want yeah eight ounces and this is going to go right into the mushrooms we're going to go ahead and turn the um we're going to turn the, the camera here oh, let's take a, a a quick pause to uh see if there are any questions we do have some questions um we have um a couple questions back uh going back to the pumpkin section. So one person is wondering, is there a tasty way of using the pumpkin seeds for snacking? Do y'all have any? <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was thinking about that this morning. There's so many things that go into this, including pumpkin seeds, that I did. I, I was going to just say, buy pumpkin seeds because you're going to be glad that you did. Um, uh, but uh, yes, you absolutely can. Uh, the, the, the pumpkin seeds that you buy in the store, actually green ones, they're grown specifically for the pumpkin flavor and for the color. I mean, for the flavor of the seed and the color. And and uh, and I think they're very tasty. But the pumpkin seeds can be done. They're white. They're not green. But you can you can dry them. Just leave them out to dry, just like you would, you know. Yeah. Put them on a sheet and leave them out to dry, and then you toast them. Once they're dry. Yeah, but you really, it really takes a while to, you want to spread them out and they're going to be all stringy and messy and gooey and yeah, gross. Yeah. Just spread them out. Don't let them be all clumped up and spread them out and let them really dry out and then they're easier to pull apart. But then, you know, a yummy way, I mean, that's, there, there are so many different, you can go sweet or you can go savory, you know, on the pumpkin seeds. You can use them in pestos. Oh, you can absolutely use yeah. them in pesto. Yeah. 
Um, so that's one one way. But you know, anything that that's a salad, they're wonderful in salads. Uh, I use them all summer in summer salads. So that that's one one option. But um, uh, toppings for you know uh, like um, what are those casserole like uh, like uh, remolada? You can yeah, chop them up, chop them up right exactly. Any, anything that you use uh, anytime that you're looking for something to add crunch to to a to a, to a, a dish, the the pumpkin seeds will work great because they they do have that. Um, so those are just a couple of ideas. Any other questions? We do. So the the recipe says um, to roast the top. Um, sorry, I'm just um, reading this question. To roast the tops on the pumpkins, and you're roasting the tops off the pumpkins. Do you have um, what's your preference for using those tops of the pumpkins? You know, I think that's something you could go either way on. Um, they they do specify. It does specify putting the pumpkin the roast the 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 um, top on the pumpkin. I like to get that little caramelization on the bottom of the pumpkin, uh, the bottom of the top, the, the bottom of the lid. Um, but uh, the uh, the other way is to put it on on the pumpkin and um, and then put it in the oven. And then when you take it out, you got to make sure you get that top off quickly so that the inside of the pumpkin dries out quickly and the moisture that's going to accumulate in there will, comes comes up and comes out while it's while it's uh, while it's cooling. So that's the, that is the one thing that you got to remember to do if you're going to put the top on the pumpkin. Any more? We're going to have to move over to the filling in just a minute. Those are the questions. Thank you so much. I'm excited okay. for the next step. So now we're going to, yeah. So now let's take a look at what's going on over here. We've got our mushrooms in and they're going at a medium to high heat. I'm going to give them a little bit of salt to help extract the moisture. And then the next step is going to be to add in the kale. So I'm going to clear some space. I'm going to put in a nice blob of butter. This was sauteed in some little bit of olive oil. So I'm going to add some butter and we're going to go throw the kale. Throw the kale in there. And you know, when you've got all these greens, if you've ever cooked greens, as soon as the heat hits them, they start to wilt very quickly and cook down. That's what you want. That's what you want. Yes. You want it to get really wilted and cooked down. You could put a lid on it at this point and let it cook for a little bit, but we're just going to keep going here. So just keep stirring it. Again, I think I'll do it just a little tiny pinch of salt, not even a scoop. You can go a little heavier than that because we're going to be salting as we go along. This is something that I like to do is salt as you go along, which we already did with the pumpkin, and now we're going to salt this up. That way you don't have to do a lot of salting either at the table or even before before you cook everything. It just where every it, it, each ingredient is salted, I think that it just makes a better, a better end result when you've got a lot, lot going on like this. Yeah, because it's layer after layer, and there's exactly. going to be no salt in the, there'll be no salt in the mashed kabocha. Um, and um, well, there'll be some because you salted the kabocha before you put it. Yeah, in. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. But there, it's such a minute amount, really. Um, so this just keeps going along here. And then and we're going to put the. We're going to go ahead and throw in some. A little more butter. A little more butter. Same thing. You want more butter? More butter. That is, that really gives it the richness. I mean, there's a lot that's going to give it richness. But. And then we've got our our shallots, right? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and throw the shallots in there. And we're going to give it some nice dollop of garlic. Yep. Yum. It smells so good. I'm sorry you can't smell, but I can tell you that it really, it smells wonderful. Okay. Give it a second there. I may go ahead and just pop the lid on for a second so it'll Let's speed that things cook. up for a second. Yep. Yep. And then do you want, should we go ahead and shift over um, to the... Um, I guess we'll just 
you want me to go ahead and do the deglazing now? I or? think we could do that. We could do that. Normally, what you would want to do is uh, bring down the. Um, you want to have the the kale reduce a little bit more than what's there. Let's take a look. We can let it cook for just a couple more minutes while you do. Okay. If you want to make the cream, and I'll keep an eye on this. Or I'll make the cream. How's that? Yeah. Okay. We're going to keep an eye on this for just a minute. And we're going to shift over here. Yep. We're going to come back for a second and um, if there are any questions, okay. please don't hesitate to interrupt as we go along. And I'm going to give you a different angle so that we can go start, keep moving this along and get ourselves ready to start an assembling things. So you're going to want this here. Mm -hmm. Any okay. questions? Uh, we do have a question. So okay. someone is wondering um, if they want to do this for Thanksgiving Day, um, how would they prep this the day before so that all they have to do is sort of heat and assemble on the day of? What a great <laughs> question. That's such a good question. Okay. So we'll take a minute here and, and address that. Um, and maybe we could continue with the, that's a good idea. We might be able to continue with the, uh, the, the, the filling. All right, so you can make each, you can make each, each section of this separate. So you can, I mean, just as we're doing today. So for example, you can get the, the, um, the squash and the pumpkin cooked in the oven, totally prepped in advance. So you're going to cook the pumpkin just enough so that it's got a little bit of give, but not enough. So it's cooked all the way through. You remove that just as I did today. I cooked that pumpkin yesterday, the one that we're going to be uh, stuffing today. And, um, Put that somewhere, you know, in a refrigerator somewhere. You're gonna have a lot of stuff in the refrigerator, but that's okay. Um, put that, put that in 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 some place, and then you're gonna do the filling, is what we just did. You can do the uh, the squash in advance, the kabocha, and have that all mashed up and ready to go. Put it in a container, put it in the refrigerator. You're gonna measure out your, <clears throat> excuse me, your nuts, which is one of the aspects of filling that we'll be talking about in just a minute. The nuts and the pepitas. And you're going to be doing, you could toast all your bread in advance. Now, one of the things we're going to talk about when we get to the bread is whether or not to use preps, uh, stuffing toast uh, or toast cubes. cubes. But if you're using the homemade cube or the uh, the homemade cubes for fresh bread, you want to get, do, get those in advance, put those in a container and put them, leave them on the counter somewhere. They, they don't have to be refrigerated all, or, uh, at all. And then in the morning, when you get ready to actually prep everything like you would stuffing a turkey, that's when you stuff your pumpkin. You stuff it all, you know, an hour or so before you're ready to serve and then put it in the oven. And in 45 to, well, it'll take 45 minutes to cook minimum. And then you want to you want to let them sit at room temperature, just like with the turkey, for about 10 minutes or so before you actually cut into it. So, so, I mean, the overall is, you know, you need like the cook sisters, you need six, six, six people, six sisters. It's the same way as making a turkey for Thanksgiving. It is, it is. Maybe, you know, a little bit more on the ingredient list in terms of the stuffing than a turkey stuffing, but some people do very complicated. Oh, turkey yes. Stuffing. Oh, yes. But to, to, to Adrian's point, it is entirely, entirely preppable one, two days in advance. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do all these components, they'll hold up just fine. And you're going to keep it separate for one obvious reason, which is that you're going to be layering it into the pumpkin. Yes. And when you, when you start stuffing. So that's why you have to keep each thing separate. So don't mix them all together and then put stuff the pumpkin. So um, Adrian's going to keep moving. I'm going to show you the, the, what she's doing with our overhead camera. And I'm just letting you know the kale, the mushroom, the shallots, the garlic, it's all smelling great. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of sherry and scrape up the bottom and a little bit of sherry vinegar. And while I'm doing that, Adrian's going to show you what goes into the cream, the cream mm -hmm. and uh, the spice cream. And then we need to also show you what goes into the glaze. Right. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So here's the cream and milk mix right in here. That's what we've got for each recipe. We're going to need two cups of cream and one cup of milk. And then this is the spice mix. So what we have here is 
can see this. We've got paprika, that's the red. We got, uh, what, what's in here? Nutmeg, right here. Ginger, cloves, and cinnamon. Yep. So that's what we got. It's, two, it's a tablespoon. Whoop, here we go. Tablespoon each of, of um, no, not a tablespoon. No, it's a, tea, two, a full teaspoon each of the of the of the paprika and the cinnamon, and then a half teaspoon each of the others. Well, I've got actually only a pinch of cloves in there. It's a pretty good sized pinch, but it's definitely a pinch. So the ginger and the nutmeg are going to be about half the amount of the others. So this all gets mixed. I'm going to use a little spoon to mix it all up. Like so. Give me a second. Mix it all up, and then it gets put in the milk, I mean, in the uh, cream mixture. And then this has to really get thoroughly mixed. And it will go down to the bottom over time. So you're going to be prepping this in advance, which is not a problem at all. I would strongly recommend that you put it in a jar that you can shake up or any container that has a lid on it and then you can shake it up uh, in, the, in the morning or in the next day. This will sit for a little bit to get all that absorbed. And then so, we're going to add some salt. Where did the salt go? Oh, you've got it over here, don't you? Yep. Here we go. So can you can you talk a little bit? Should we talk for a second about what else you can use this cream? Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. So um, we're going to salt again. As I said earlier, we're going to salt as we go along. So that's why I'm putting a little salt in here. It will take much, probably a half a teaspoon or so. And if you like a little bit more salt, you can definitely put you know three quarters of a teaspoon. But I wouldn't overdo it because once it's in there, you can't get it out. And I'm also going to put some pepper in here. So this is uh, obviously a savory cream mixture and um uh this is something if you have any left over this will go great on a on a uh what, what i'm trying to think of the word would be um the potato um the, the, the gratin, the gratin any any kind of gratin uh, the potato potato gratin you've got some great flavors to go in here it would go it would go with a fennel uh, onion gratin or a uh a, um, a green gratin, anything like that that you're going to be using to do a sort of a, a, a gratin in a gratin dish or a, um, uh, a part of a souffle or a white sauce. So don't throw it out. Absolutely don't throw it out. You might you well have some left over depending on how many pumpkins you're using. And if you keep it in the jar in the refrigerator and shake it up every now and again, this will keep absorbing and you'll be able to use it for other things i don't think i wouldn't put it in my coffee <laughs> since it has salt and pepper in there but you know a gratin and a, a, a casserole that calls for a did you did you add some salt and pepper i did i put some salt Perfect. and pepper in there already yeah so it doesn't need to be warmed or anything i mean you could but it, it, it not would... for this dish but some some dish some yes gratins, for example would call you can it's very versatile you can warm it up absolutely and it won't won't be a problem for it. Okay. All right, so we're going to move this out of the way. There you go. And the next thing we're going to do. Oh, yeah, go ahead. All set? You're, yeah, I'm good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our glaze. So we've got miso. This I think you can find this pretty much on, on a lot of different supermarkets. Yeah, you? now we're using red miso. We are, but it doesn't have to be red. It could be the, the, the yellow. I, I actually prefer the gold. Do you? Yes, for, for this, because it has, doesn't have quite, you'll see, the, the red makes it quite dark. But uh, whatever miso you're going to most likely use, just get that and don't worry too much about the color. If you like the, prefer the light miso, you absolutely should, should use light miso. And if you prefer the dark, obviously, like we're going to do today, we're going to use that. Um, so we're just going to do us. I'm doing a little. Since our pumpkin is smaller, I'm going to do a little bit less. If, so I'm going to do one tablespoon of the miso, one tablespoon of the honey instead of the two. Um, but normally you would do that. I'm just going to do. Let's see what a glob looks like. This looks like about a tablespoon right here. Whoop. There we go. 
and then some water just to give it a little bit of uh it needs to be a little runny to get it on yeah because you need to you're going to paint it basically right so you want to have it a little not liquidy but a little yeah it's going to be able to just go on smoothly yeah so here we go and this is a great glaze also that you can just put on roasted vegetables you could put it on roasted vegetables but one of the things i really love about this glaze is because it goes on the skin it makes the skin totally edible so for example if you're going to do an acorn squash in the oven and you want to cut it up and and uh and you want to you, you don't want to just take the flesh out to do it i love acorn squash just stri in strips but you could put the glaze on the exterior of the squash before you cut it up and you'll have a glaze glazing on the skin uh, before you uh if, before it goes in the oven and it just gives it a really one almost a bacony kind of thing because it kind of crisps it up and it's got the the strong uh flavor from the miso and then the little bit of sweetness from the honey so you can definitely use it for for a glaze for for for, for vegetables uh what else could you use it for i don't know if you want to put necessarily put it on you could put it on 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 roasted pineapple it yeah. would be it would give it a sweet and sour kind not maybe not sweet and sour, i mean you could use it as a glaze on salmon yes you could that's right or even 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 uh sword yeah on fish yes. generally but certainly yeah. because of the strong flavor of the, the the depth of the miso and the little bit of honey i think it would pair really well with an oily fish like sword or or, or salmon right okay so what's next? Do we, do we take, a big, some take a breath, everyone? Take a, yes, we need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, Want to take a few questions and then we'll start the assembly? Yeah, I think um, we could do that. You want to look at our, our, our lovely faces one more time for a moment and <laughs> um, share any questions or any thoughts today? And, perfect. and then we're going to we're going to go in for the for the, the grand finale the grand finale yeah that's right okay wonderful we do have some questions here um one person is wondering about um the best time to add the time when you're cooking your stuffing so the recipe says to put the time in sort of with everything and let it cook together um i think today you put it in when you added the sherry and cherry vinegar is there a, a, a strategy is it sort of six and one half a dozen of the other other what do you guys think so that's a great question, and there is a, 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 chemi a sort of chemical response to that, which is if you don't have fresh thyme, you would want to use dry thyme. And if that were the case, you would want to put the dry thyme in a little bit earlier in the process so that it can really infuse and moisten up. I used fresh thyme, so I put it in at the end, okay? Uh, because it's it's got great flavor, but it also, I didn't want to scorch it. I didn't want to brown it. I didn't want it to get overcooked. I just wanted the, the aroma and the oils to like come in at the end. So that's the main, that's really the divider is fresh thyme versus dry thyme. Anything great. else you want to add there? No, no, I think that's right. We, uh, we I think what happens is when you deglaze with that thyme in there, it just really, uh, it, it really does uh, make the time you know infuses the time into the into the flavoring so one other notation is uh, the balance of quantities if you're going to go with the dry time you're not going to need as much right. as you do with the fresh time right exactly so what are we talking about a tea, tea, about two teaspoons of time that we put in there fresh maybe two or three yeah you would use about a half as half much of that yes right. with the dry that is good to know. Thank you. Um, we've got some questions about the cream. A couple folks are wondering if you could substitute um, coconut milk or evaporated milk for the cream. Right. Um, I think the evaporated milk might give it a little bit of a flavor that you that you wouldn't want in this. But coconut milk, absolutely. Oat milk, any of the vegan or uh, vegetarian uh creams that are out there you know not the plant-based creams that are out there you could absolutely do that stay away from the ones that have any sugar in them um but what did you what there's an oat cream that you like right it's well it's a, well it's an oat milk uh, you know the coconut milk like if you're talking about canned coconut milk that's going to dominate oh yeah that's going to dominate yeah you don't all want that. the flavoring 
So you're going to really, that's going to overwhelm all the work you went through to do the, these carefully selected, lovely layering. So I would definitely stay away from a canned coconut milk. I would even stay away from a beverage coconut milk. Um, it doesn't have as much. Of the it does not flavor, have as yeah. much. Um, but I have, I really like uh, using oat milk. I use, I work with a lot of oat milk and I like the, the ones, I mean, any of the oat milks are great, but for this, just to get that real richness of that kind of creamy flavor, if you get an oat milk um, that is a barista, so it's sort of there, it's great with coffee, the oat milk barista oat milk. Again, no sugar, no flavoring. Um, that would work very, very well. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. If someone is wondering about a good wine pairing for this road, <laughs> any suggestions? You take that one. Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, why me? <laughs> yeah. No, I think because well, you just know more about it than I do. We uh, got to call in Christopher, the brother, yeah, right? Our, our wine judge brother. Um, so you know, similar to what what goes well with the turkey. Yeah. You know, a Beaujolais, a Beaujolais, um, Nouveau. A, a Beaujolais Nouveau, a light. Pinot Noir, I mean, mm -hmm. Beaujolais Nouveau is a, you know, it's a thing that happens just this time of year in mid-November. Um, but a Beaujolais Village would be great. Um, you could go Italian. You could go with a Monte Pucciano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't want anything too heavy. Like, you don't want a cab necessarily. A young Merlot would be nice. Um, think, and of, think about, think about, you know, the mushroom is a, a little meaty. And, but then you've got a lot of, you've got the, 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 the cans and the nuts, which sort of all right. give it a light. The lightness yeah and, and then if you're gearing towards a white variety mm -hmm. um i think a good um sauvignon blanc personally i love some of the uh australian and new zealand sauvignon blancs are wonderful because those have a lot going on there the other one that would work really nicely with this is a spanish albarino um yeah i would stay away from something like a pinot grigio that's kind of lightweight and more of a summer wine on the whites you might be able to get a good if you can get, find a good Chablis. That could go. That, could that would be really list. nice because that pairs really well with turkey. And on the heavier side, of, depending on how people feel about it, a Chardonnay. Sure. sure. So those are the those are our ideas so far. So should we switch back to our overhead and let's pull this beautiful pumpkin together? Pumpkin together and see okay. what it's all about because we Absolutely. do. We do have to do that, and then we need to see what it's going to look like when it's all done, right? Yeah. All so, right. So give us the rundown. Okay, here we go. All right, here's our pumpkin. Here's the lid. It's got a little caramelish on it. This is the one that I made yet that I cooked up yesterday, so it's got just the right amount of cooking in it. Now, we're going to start with, okay, here's our lineup of what we're going to put in here. We're going to start with the kaboka squash. Then we're going to go with the bread, which we prepped our stuff, which we prepped yesterday. This is crunchy, not good, nice crunchy croutons. And then we're going to go with the the stuffing, uh, the filler that we just made with the with the look how pretty that looks. Can you see that? It's got all the mushrooms in it, and it's got just a little. See all the all the uh, liquids have been absorbed. Or, or cooked off so that all you're getting is that great, great um, flavor in there. One of the things I like to do, by the way, if you're inclined to go that in that direction, is put a little bit of hot pepper flakes in this. That's not for everybody's taste buds, so we're not suggesting it in this, but that's just an Adrian idea. Adrian and her hot pepper flakes. Right, exactly. She can't get away from it. And then we're gonna do... Okay, and then, then we're gonna do the nuts. Yes. Then we're gonna, we've got pecans. We've got a layer of nuts. And I do these separately because I, that's just the way, you know, I just, I prefer that. You could mix them together, but, and uh, the the recipe calls for three quarters of a cup each. I think that that may be a little generous. You can move these up under the, under I the can. Pan. Yes, that's a great idea. Put that over here. Okay. And then the final thing that we're gonna put in there is Gruyere cheese. No, the final thing. Oh, the thing. final thing. Oh, we're going to do this in between. Yes, there's the cream. And we're going to be putting this in between each layer. So we're going to start with... No, the, you're not. You're going to put it at the end. 
No? You're gonna you changed it up on me? No, I think uh, all right. All right, so we'll just I'll just show you that, all right? So here we go with the kaboko squash. It's just pretty much the same color as the other one, but it's got a slightly different flavor, so there's a little it's there, just very nuanced. There's, it is a different flavor. And the other thing is, you know, it's soft and it's mashed. And when you serve this, you're gonna serve a cut of the pumpkin. So you'll have some firmer pumpkin along the with outside. the mash. So here you've got the the mashed kaboka in there. You can see that. All right. We're gonna put some croutons in there, and you wanna push them down in there with your hand, because I think that's really the only tool that's gonna really work to do that. But if you find something that works better, you should use it. I thought maybe a masher, a potato masher would help, but it doesn't. So I just push my hand down in there. So we're gonna have a certain amount and you'll see when I hold it up. You see that? We've got a yep. all in there, okay. okay. Next. Next, we're gonna put this, the actual stuffing stuffing. I mean, the part that's the, the, the center and the, there we go. We're going to put all that in there. Now we're going to try to get two layers in here. So you don't want to overdo on the first layer. Right. And you do want to push it down. So we've got our layer of, you can barely see it, but there it is. And we're going to just push that down with your fist. Again, this, this is very hands-on, right? <laughs> Hands on, literally. Yep. Okay. Push that down, and each layer needs to get, get pushed out. Now, the next thing is going to be the. These are the pecans, and these are um, the ones from. These are actually from Trader Joe's, but any any pecans that have already been already been chopped up, I think, is the best way to go. You could obviously you can do your own if you prefer to do that, and they, you might want bigger pieces, but I like it like this. I like those size, and it's yes. all toasted. So. It's all to pre-toasted, so we didn't even bother with the toasting, at least of the pecans. So this is your layer of pecans. Look at that. looks like a little bird's nest. <laughs> okay, now we've got our nice green pumpkin seeds that are going to go in there, and these have been toasted. We toasted those in the toaster. So... You don't have to do both of these, but it adds a nice crunch and they're very different in flavor. So, and besides you're delivering more, even more goodness. Well, you know, uh, the, the nutrition aside, which is, uh, which is significant, it's just, it's just such a great combination when you're eating it. Yep. You know, you've got so much going on. It's very satisfying. So you can see that there. Okay. And next we're going to do a layer of rear. Put that in. Rear cheese. Now, let's talk cheese for a second, okay. right? Yep. Um, cheese. If you're not a cheese person, you don't need to do the cheese. If you're looking for a, a vegan option, um, you know, you want to find one that's creamy and that's going to melt. There's your cheese. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you're not, for whatever reason, if you're not a fan of the Gruyere. Now we're going to start again. Start again. Start again. If you're not a fan of the Gruyere, uh, a Fontina would be fine. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to put the cream in here. Oh, Lordy. Get the cream in there. Get the cream in there. Stir there it up go. so you get all those Look yummy, at that lovely, look at beautiful. all the beautiful spices that are going in there. Okay. A little, a little cream. There we go. Okay. Now we... So you've got, she's got enough filling here for two pumpkins. We're only going to do, have time to fill the one. Yes, but the cream goes, sits on here. Now we're going to put the rest of the kaboka squash in there. And starting all over again from the bottom up. Put that in there. A nice layer so that we can get all that bread down in there. Cream's going to come up over it, but that's okay. We'll put our bread in there. So you see that, right? All right, now more bread i gotta move here so we're gonna go quickly we've got our layer of bread another layer of the spinach filling and Get that down in there you know if you're doing individual really small ones you're probably only going to get one layer in them if you're doing a a, a, a pumpkin that's around a pound or a pound and a quarter because these are closer to three the ones 
Adrian's got is about a three and a half pound pumpkin. Okay, here we go. And the cream. Don't forget the cream. Yep. There's your Gruyere. And I just top it out and we set the um, little more cream. We're going to set the lid, the little top, the little cap, kind of in a little bit of an angle when we, when we serve it. But anyway, this is ready to go in the oven. Where is our... Okay. You can hand it off to me. Okay. There's the... So... This is going to be, this is, here we are with the lid, and this is going to get bubbly. The glaze, you want to, you forgot the glaze. Oh, the glaze. Sorry glaze it yep. while it's, on, it the, while it's on, on, the, on the sheet pan yeah, so you don't make a mess of everything. Right. There we go. It's a good idea to have some kind of a, cheat sheet on these things so that you don't forget these things because there are a lot of steps. Now the glaze they say is optional. I've never I've never not done the glaze because it, it really adds such a nice color to it and such a pretty, such a flavorful exterior. You can eat the entire thing, even though what usually one says, don't eat the pumpkin shell or the pumpkin skin. But in this particular case, because it's been flavored and because it's been cooked to the point where it's gonna not be hard anymore, you really can. So there we are. We're going to glaze it like so. And the top. And the top. Like so. And well, I'll show you with the ones that done. I leave this down in here. This is ready to go in the oven. And this is going to cook for 45 minutes. And then you take it out and let it sit for another. All right. Should we grab this and bring it over? Sure can. Okay, here we go. Look at these. So this is a white pumpkin that we did. It's an experiment. It's one one of these. And we got it all beautifully glazed up. <laughs> it looks, it looks, it looks, looks so funny, funny, doesn't it? <laughs> From but, this angle. But look at look at the top, how beautiful that gruyere is. It's almost like an onion soup look, right? And we're gonna put the top right on here. So and this, this really, I, I think personally that I think maybe the glaze is the wrong, the, the white pumpkin is probably the wrong color for this, but I think it's fine. It's kind of fun. But look at how beautiful the, 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 the pumpkin colored pumpkin comes out. It's got this gorgeous. Can you plop it on there? Yes. And I, can I switch places with you so we yes, can cut can. into it? Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. So you can, this is a, you can see that this is one of the smaller size ones. This is about. Uh, maybe a pound and a half. So, so um, yeah. there, you know, I don't know if the lighting is right from your angle, but there's a gorgeous glaze and sheen to this that is really, 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 really pretty. And so now for the final thing, mm -hmm. should we go for it? Yeah, we're gonna cut it in we're half. We're gonna cut it in half. And you're gonna see what it looks like on the inside. And it's got this. Oh my gosh. Smells amazing. It's got this gooey, beautiful layering. And, and that's how you want to serve it. You don't want to take the stuffing out and make it separate. You want to put no, it in. Yeah. And individual guests can eat as much or as little as they want of the skin. They don't have to eat it. There's no requirement on any of this. But uh, you don't want to disentangle everything because that's really the proper way to serve it. I mean, look at that. Turkey or this? Come on. <laughs> both. 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 I say both. But there you have it. This and looks incredible. We have a couple remaining questions. Yeah. Um, if we could keep you uh, for the last five minutes here. Um, yeah. We've got someone wondering about how many folks, uh, I know you said the size of the pumpkins can vary, but about how many folks would the roast pumpkin feed? Yeah, so a, so a, a, a four or five pounder would feed probably six or seven, maybe six, I think, because people are going to want more than one one helping because it is the main course. Um, yeah, I mean this this but this is this is know, like four really good size yes, pieces, and this, and this is, is a two pound pumpkin, right? So um, so it it depends. I mean it, it depends on the size of your pumpkin. Really, it's sort of like a turkey, I guess. Um, one thing I think that if you're going to serve the uh, serve it as one large pumpkin, you're going to have 
more filling than you're a pumpkin, whereas these smaller ones is going to be about equal. In other words, the, the relative amount of, you know, the, the exterior to the interior. Um, but uh, the way we, what we talked about before is if you want to go for a smaller pumpkin and, or like an acorn squash and put one up, then you probably do want, want to do one per person. And, you know, the, the amounts that we have in the recipe, that's going to do easily eight to ten people. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I want to mention is you could serve, if you want to warm up the cream and serve that on the side and people can pour more cream on their on their slices, you can do that. And some people might want a little bit more cheese, too. So I would recommend if you want to. <laughs> I mean, I like cheese, you know. <laughs> and I, I think you could put that on the side, too, just as, a, as an ex extra little condiment for the for the uh for the pumpkin that's nice. and of course cranberry sauce goes great with this too yeah, yep so you can keep going with all the all the regular accoutrements of, of a thanksgiving meal absolutely that sounds wonderful um someone is wondering if you have any suggestions for a pecan substitute um if someone is allergic to tree nuts yeah um well i mean i would just get rid of not use them because the, the pistachios, uh, excuse me, the pumpkin seeds are are terrific. Um, why not? You could well, if they're allergic to tree nuts. Oh, oh yeah. You they're could do. Pumpkin. You could put some uh, pinolis, but that's kind of an. Ex they're they're expensive. I wouldn't do that. I yeah. wouldn't do that. I would just stick with the pepitas, yes. the pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for sharing this incredible recipe, and thank you everyone who attended today.